Hi, I'm Dave Darty. I'm president of DigiKey Electronics. Hi, my name is Kim Heinley Nelson. My job title is Senior Quality Engineer Manager. Here at DigiKey, I work a lot with uh, operational excellence and the quality and, and how it interacts um, as we roll in new engineering projects. So my name is Randall Resley. I'm the Vice President of Applications Engineering here at DigiKey, where we help customers more than anything else select the right part. My name is Scott Raker. I'm a Technical Marketing Manager and uh, Partnership Marketing. My name is Cassandra Isaacson. I'm a software engineer on the pre-sales team at DigiKey. My name is Austin Tadman, um, and I'm a software engineer here. Um, and I do anything from um, maintaining code, writing code, um, testing code, um, anything that IT does, that's kind of what I do. You know, it's an interesting decision. It's People ask me, why did I choose engineering? It seems so long ago. I graduated in, in 84. But going into college, like many, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. But I knew I liked math and science. And, and engineering, particularly the electrical area, was, was just kind of exploding. My stepdad was an electrician. So I figured that was a good, place to, a good place to start without really knowing at that particular time what I would do with it. I got into engineering because my high school physics teacher had suggested that engineering might be a good fit for what I like to do with math and science. NDSU has a general engineering and architecture program and really was excited to learn about industrial engineering, which is the people side of engineering. Growing up, my father was a mechanical engineer and he built a lot of projects and I started building projects when I was probably eight years old or so and then later in college I went to electrical engineering and continued to build stuff on, my, on the side but these were designs of my own. I chose engineering and mainly electrical engineering because I was always interested in electricity and electronics as a kid and uh, my parents encouraged college so I thought it would be a good, good match for electrical engineering. I chose engineering because I liked being able to design something that did something and I liked being able to see an end result. I chose engineering because I really enjoy problem solving um, and helping other people with their problems. Um, I, I kind of get a kick out of improving processes, um, ma making other people's lives a little easier. I attended a real small regional school, Worcester Polytech, in uh, the Boston area. Inside of New England, it's pretty well known. You know, here, now that I'm in Minnesota, I'd probably equate it a little bit to like the South Dakota School of Mines. Strong reputation regionally for, for engineering. I attended North Dakota State University. I attended school at the University of Cincinnati. I got my uh, bachelor's degree in 1979. Now, University of Cincinnati, interestingly, invented cooperative education in America. So it's a school that took five years to get through because you had to work for an employer for a full year. So that, that taught me a lot. Now, coming out of the school, I was so interested in electrical engineering that I stayed on and got my master's. But back then, you were able to get a master's degree going at night and occasionally on a Saturday. I attended school at the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities campus. I went to school at the University of Wisconsin-Stout in Menominee, Wisconsin. I went to North Dakota State um, and I obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science there. So. You know, when I, when I think back in high school initially, you have fleeting thoughts, what do I want to do, a doctor, a lawyer. For me, I grew up in the East Coast in Boston. You know, one of my uh, one of my thoughts was I want to be a marine biologist. I want to just be participate in the, in the ocean and scuba dive and be underwater. I don't know that I ever thought realistically about how I'd make a career out of that. So, I'm not really sure what I would have done if I didn't go into engineering. I figured I would let that be a starting point and and, and give me some routes from there. I originally wanted to be a landscape architect, but my artistic skills aren't good enough to do that. So I also have a business degree. So a lot of the engineering activity that I do, I do because I think there's an economic value. So I probably would have gone into finance or something like that. If I hadn't gone into engineering, I would likely be an artist, which is kind of a trick question because it's still a hobby and still a side hustle. If I hadn't gotten into engineering, I would probably lean towards something along the lines of sports journalism. I was really interested in that in high school, so something along those lines probably. Like most, the big question is once you get this degree is what the heck do I do with it? Uh, you know, I was fortunate that I was at a school that uh, did not have the, the formal structured co-op program that some do, but it did get you involved and encouraged. There were some required projects and that introduced me to some companies and I got involved with 
uh, electronic components and infant mortality and, and how to test. So I was kind of introduced before I actually graduated and 84 happened to be a very good year for, for electrical engineers and there were a lot of openings and, and I chose at the time to stay and work for a digital equipment corporation, a well-known company that seems like a dinosaur now. It's been bought twice since, at one time the largest employer in Massachusetts and now just a footnote to many old alumni like myself. DigiKeed come down there looking for industrial engineers, had never heard of Thief for Rapals, so I uh, thought I'd give it a try. Um, at the time, we were looking at shipping orders same day, which was something at that time um, wasn't done by anyone else, so it was pretty exciting. I had been involved in a grocery distribution uh, company, Super Value, prior to coming to DigiKeed, and really enjoyed that as well. So because I went to the University of Cincinnati, which is a cooperative education college, and I co-opted Baldwin Piano and Organ Company, and that was great fun. Uh, Baldwin was one of those companies that showed up at AT&T's announcement of the transistor. So they were using advanced electronics early on. Uh, there's a semiconductor company that's an offshoot of Baldwin. And so what we were doing is to use microprocessors, which were very new at the time, to replace the analog electronics inside musical instruments. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, I was, I was uh, uh, sold on the, on the uh, industry. Uh, I started at uh, I started my first job at Honeywell as an uh, electronics technician. I had uh, left in my uh, sophomore year in uh, college. Uh, I was looking to um, work full time and, and then go to school at night. Got my degree at night. I started out here actually. I had an internship at Digikey over the summer working on the forms team. And by the time the internship came to a close, they're like, "Would you like to stay?" And I said yes. <laughs> I started out here at DigiKey actually as a software engineer intern um, and it was during my junior year in college. Um, I got to work with a lot of cool tech um, and learned a lot on the job so, 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 so I thought that was pretty awesome. And then when I graduated from college they actually hired me full time. So. What I loved about going into engineering is it seemed to open many career paths. I was almost embarrassed to do this video because there's so many smart engineers that I work with here that are customers of ours and I don't put myself in anywhere near that classification. I enjoy people, I'm pretty extroverted and so I fairly quickly took that engineering path into field apps engineering to be able to work with customers and then later you know, directly into sales or technical sales and I didn't realize how many things that you can do with engineers. It's, there isn't just one path, you can take it into business. Many CEOs of, of so many of the companies we deal with are, are engineers. The ability to problem solve and to think in that structured format can, can service and provide benefits again in a, in a plethora of opportunities. So I'd recommend that it's a, I think it's a highly sought after base foundation skill set and I don't think you can go wrong if you choose that path. Um, the advice I'd give to somebody starting out in engineering is, is be curious, ask questions, look around you, figure out how things work, and then look at ways to make them better. Um, one part about it, you know, engineers are usually considered, you know, on their own, you know, take the opportunity, get together with other teams, bounce ideas off each other, challenge each other. You know, some of our best work here is when we disagree and we can talk through it and say, okay, let's, you know, let's try something different and actually, you know, challenge each other to prove it out. So a wonderful thing that is happening today is that you do not have to have as deep a specialized knowledge in order to build things electronic. So there are Arduino platforms, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBoard, and these boards are available very inexpensively at costs of you know, $10, uh, most of them all under $30. So you're able to build things and construct things, and then online you can follow someone's instructions. So whereas I had Heath kits growing up, today there's a much, much broader choice. Um, I guess advice I would give someone looking at engineering is that it, it's really a multi-faceted uh, career that you can align engineering with so many other things. It gives you a lot of flexibility and choices, but it really opens the door for a future career. So if you were just beginning or thinking about getting into engineering, I would say that it's all right to ask questions. You're not going to know everything right away. No one knows everything ever. So if you're unsure, just ask. Someone will help. Someone just entering the engineering field, I would say um, work, work a lot on your communication skills. Um, a lot of people forget that a big part of engineering is the communication side. You know, it's very important to communicate with your customers, um, gathering requirements and stuff. So I feel that, you know, um, half of engineering is the communication side. 
future of engineering. I don't know that it's ever been so bright. It, it seems like uh, you know maybe there was a little bit of, of, of dimming and, and less focus for a while, but with initiatives like STEM and programs like FIRST Robotics or VEX Robotics, I think we realize that uh, you know, more so than movie stars or athletes, it's engineers and scientists that have truly changed the world. In fact, it's people thinking like that that have been the only type of people that have ultimately changed the world. And, and you know, look in our world of electronics, we're already seeing, if you asked me 10 years ago, what would a smartphone look like, I would have looked at you funny and said, what do we need a phone for other than to make a call? Uh, it, now, whether it's medical devices, our, our bodies are, are still one of the, the most under-equipped our, our car is a hundred times more technology, technology advanced and we know more about what's going on in our car than we do with ourselves. So it is just going to continue to explode in many different directions and areas. The future of engineering, the job outlook looks good. I have two sons who are engineering students. Um, one his third year in college, one just starting out next year. So of course as a mom I checked out the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and, and engineering jobs um, look to be holding steady or even rising in certain different uh, sectors. One of my favorite quotes from um, uh, Patrick Green is the future belongs to those who learn new skills and combine them in creative ways. So I see the future of engineering continue to grow. I can't imagine a future that has less engineering in it. Uh, our, our standard of living increases because of the technology that engineering brings all of us, our health and our conveniences. So because you can get higher levels of integration in these small packages that are inexpensive, I picture there being more and more generalists in electrical engineering and uh, per capita maybe smaller specialists, but it's these specialists who will be making the modules that, that all the others use. So I see a certain codification, you know, uh, uh, back to a, co a cottage industry of sorts for uh, electronics. Uh, the future of engineering I see is just constantly evolving. I guess that's why I'm really interested in uh, electrical engineering electronics because it's constantly getting bigger, faster, less power, more capable, more intelligent, and the uh, sky is kind of the limit. The future of engineering I can see more cross-discipline involvement. So not just science people or just math people, but bringing in different types of fields to help bring different perspectives for the end solution. To me, the future of engineering looks pretty bright. Um, I think there's lots of opportunities to be had still. Um, anytime you need um, new roads, new buildings created, um, new software, for my case, you're going to need, need those engineers. So I feel they're very important still.